cervical radiculopathy, whether it's from a C5, C6 disc bulge, or even from cervical degenerative arthritis, cervical radiculopathy can cause a tremendous amount of pain, numbness and tingling into the shoulders, arms, wrist, hand, and fingers. So in this video, I'm gonna give you four strengthening exercises for the cervical spine, your neck, to help strengthen and stabilize the neck when there's cervical radiculopathy or a C5, C6 disc bulge type of injury. Hi, I'm Dr. Walter Salubro, corrective care chiropractor in Vaughan, Ontario, Canada. And what this channel is about is giving you tips and strategies on how to stabilize and strengthen your back. Like this, you can bend, move, and lift normally and without limitation. And like this, you can enjoy the things you want to do in life. So if you want these tips and strategies, subscribe right now by clicking on that red subscribe button, tap on all notifications, and do let me know in the comments below that you subscribe and I will personally reply back to you with a thank you. One of the biggest problems with the cervical spine when it comes to degenerative arthritis, disc injuries that trigger symptoms like numbness and tingling in the arms or that cervical radiculopathy is that there is weakness in the cervical spine muscles, especially the anterior muscles. And another problem is that there's bad posture. When there's abnormal or weak muscle function, you get bad posture and it just compounds the problem over and over. So these four exercises that will help to strengthen and stabilize the muscles of the cervical spine are very effective for many conditions that relate to the neck, not just cervical radiculopathy, but also disc bulge conditions, arthritis degeneration, and even bad posture. So let's get into these exercises right now, and I'll show you them, and I'll explain them as we go along. Exercise number one is cervical isometric resistance. We're going to do flexion first and then extension. So take your hands, put it on your forehead. You're going to move your head in the bending forward position, but you're going to resist it with your hands. So take your hands, put it on your forehead. You see that I'm moving towards my hands, but I'm resisting the movement. So I'm creating a contraction of my flexion muscles, strengthen those muscles. Yet because it's isometric, which means the muscle lengths don't change, it's low intensity if you're in pain or if you're rehabbing your neck. Okay, so very good exercise. We give this one to our patients all the time in our office or at home. Hold it for one to two seconds and repeat it five to 10 times. When you're done with the flexion position, you're gonna go into extension. So the motion is extension, but you're resisting with your hands. So you put your hands at the base of your skull at the back behind your ears and you're pushing into your hands. Hold it for one to two seconds and repeat it five to 10 times. So this is the extension position isometric resistance strengthening. Do flexion first and then extension. Very, very good exercise, low intensity strengthening for the cervical muscles. Great start to rehab to strengthen and stabilize the cervical spine for cervical spine injuries and related symptoms like cervical radiculopathy. For the next three exercises, you'll need your bed. I'll show you on my chiropractic table. This is called prone cervical static hold. Prone cervical static hold. You'll suspend your head and neck off the bed and you're gonna maintain that extension position. So slightly into extension, but you'll see essentially your head and ear is in line with the shoulder, okay, and your back. And you're using the effects of gravity and you're strengthening the extensor muscles. Try to hold it for your max hold. Okay, aim for 30 seconds. Eventually try to hold for one to two minutes. Then you'll do the opposite, which is the supine cervical static hold. This is number exercise number three, cervical supine static hold. You'll see that my head and neck is completely in line with my body and I'm suspended, again, using the effects of gravity acting on my head as resistance and maintaining my neck neutral. That's working the flexor muscles, okay? Now, exercise number four is strengthening the deep cervical flexor muscles. These are very important. You start by tucking your chin in and then bringing your head off the table, so you're flexing it, okay? Now, the wrong way to do this is like this. Do not jut your chin out. So see that? You need to flex it, so don't do this. Do not jut your chin out. That's poor coordination. You wanna tuck your chin in and then flex it, so bend towards your chest without chutting your chin up. Hold it for one to two seconds, and if you can, even longer, up to 10 seconds, okay? And then you do repetitions up to 10 repetitions. So here you go again. You tuck your chin in, 
strengthen the deep cervical flexor muscles. Very important for cervical rehabilitation. Hold it for 10 seconds if you can, up to 10 seconds. And then repeat that 10 times. Tuck your chin in and then lift your head off the table and flex your neck muscles without jutting your chin out, okay? Great four exercises for strengthening and stabilizing the cervical spine for cervical radiculopathy and other cervical related problems. Now that you have these four strengthening and stabilization exercises for the cervical spine that can be good for cervical radiculopathy or any other cervical condition like a disc bulge or degeneration, let me know which one you'll try first and what you think of it. Will it be the supine cervical static hold or will it be the isometric cervical resistance exercises. As well, remember to like this video like this, it helps in the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe if you're new to my channel, comment below if you have any questions, and I wanna give you some more exercises for cervical radiculopathy related to C5, C6 region. Go ahead and watch this video right here for some nerve glide style exercises to help with cervical radiculopathy. Catch that video right there right now.